here from sunny San Diego, California. I have a very special patient. I know I say that about everybody, but it's true, everyone's special. This one is special because he is a family friend of one of my hospitalist colleagues at this hospital. So if I don't do a good job, I'm gonna have to see him every day and he's gonna give me the stink eye. Their families go on vacations together, they belong to a country club together. He himself lives in Scotland, he's an entrepreneur and private equity investor. So um, I have to do a really good job and I'll show you his interview studies. This poor gentleman has been kind of suffering in silence for quite some time. Here's his imaging studies. He's got um, multi-level spondylosis, not so bad, but at four or five, it's terrible. He's got this large central disc herniation. And then at three, four, he's got a foraminal disc bulge right here. We did a targeted left-sided transferaminal injection at three, four and four, five, and he got temporary partial relief, but the pain came back. He also has a disc bulge at L5S1, but that is on the right side, and it's not so bad. His pain level is not bad enough to warrant the surgery that he was recommended, which is when it gets bad enough, we can do a fusion surgery at two or three levels. No one wants that surgery because it's a scary surgery. Sometimes you need it, but I reserve that for patients with either deformity or instability, and he has neither. He just has degenerative disc disease and arthritis. So we're gonna do, instead of a fusion, a minimal invasive transforaminal laser endoscopic discectomy and annuloplasty and facet rhizotomy through a little poke hole going through the natural opening of the spine, avoiding all these important muscles, and then putting on a Band-Aid so he can get back to his busy life as soon as possible. So we're all excited and hoping for a great result. All right, we're getting set up. I've got my big T brother from another mother here. He's gonna be running the intraoperative imaging. Without him, I'm like three blind mice. So cannot do anything without big T and his magical skills. Then we've got the color coordinated scrub team my PA, my black belt scrub tech, anesthesia hiding back there. And way in the corner is neuromonitoring. There she is. We've got our circulator scurrying about. And I know you're wondering, what do I do? I know, I don't want to break a nail, so I wait until the very last minute before I scrub in. And when everything's totally teed up, I'm gonna make the perfect incision and do the perfect surgery. Right, Kendra? Yes, of course. I, I pay her to say that. Alrighty, I've made the perfect poke hole. Now I'm gonna use the spaghetti noodle dilator and make my way to the surgical target site. Oh yes, I'm already in the neural foramen. If you're wondering how I got there, I'm using anatomic technique, intraoperative imaging, and the false loop, the false. Look at that, it is like a dead disc. There's the leak. You can see this whole halo up there. Alrighty, here's the first look inside the neural frame and everything is tight. Look at all that blue. I should be looking in the canal. So now I'm gonna take this ball tip feeler and feel around. So that's the pedicle of L5. That's the entry point into the canal and all that's gotta go. And look, you can see the blue from the disc herniation in the middle right there. How cool is that? All right, I gotta take out all this caca poo poo so I can look inside the canal. Gotta look all the way to the midline. Oh yes, pretty gratifying being able to pull all this stuff out. Oh yes, like my teenage kids, it's not gonna come out without a fight. This is the Trigger Flex Probe. The original name is called the Elman Probe after Alan Elman who invented this. He's one of my closest colleagues and buddies. We've grown old together, it's pretty cute. We reminisce about all the days when we started doing endoscopic surgery 20 years ago. But I cannot do the surgery without this device. All right, I have the laser now. It's side firing, it's non-electrical. It works on hard tissue, including some bone spurs. And it's the perfect complement to all my other instruments. Not everybody uses the laser, but I don't know how I would do the surgery without it. So this is rubbery annulus tissue, bone spur, gristle, and kakapoo poo. Very difficult to get rid of without this instrument. Now you can see inside the canal, that dark area, it's like a cave. You can see the pink tissue in the canal. Big disc on the MRI. I can feel it right there. Like a big snot ball in the back of my nose. I know, it's gross. I'm sure people are gonna be like, Dad, I can't believe you said that on video. They're like, I know, I couldn't help myself, but it's the truth. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the curly Q pituitary to reach up very, very carefully. That's where the nerves are, so. Do not try this at home. 
Okay, now I got the ball tip feeler. I am rooting around in there, making sure that there's nothing left over. Shot. Yep. Oh, that feels good. Mm-hmm, because we got this. It's like using that little plumbing tool to unclog your sink. What is that called, the snake? That's what I need. I feel a little bump there, but not much. A lot better. Okay, I'm at the next level, L3, 4. I did the worst level first, 4, 5, and that was bad, but it went well. I have the tiny little skinny needle in. I'm going to do the chromatodiscogram at this level. Shot, way easier than the other level. Busted up this too, even though it looks tall. Shot. You can already see the leakage out the back. There's like this little horn or point. Leaking out the front too. After all we've done for this disc, can you believe it? Okay, now we're at the L3-4 level. Here's the first look. This one doesn't have a lot of stenosis to begin with. It just has a far lateral disc protrusion with an annular tear. And that's it right there. Here and toward me. And then wherever there's an empty tent sign. Lots of inflammation for sure though. But this level's not nearly as bad as 4-5. And by the time we get done, all this empty tent stuff and any loose fragments are going to be removed and we should have a clear pathway to the canal. Okay, so I'm using the very important trigger flex probe. Here's the busted up disc area with inflammation. Everything's stuck down a little bit. Look at that blood vessel right on end right there. You can never see that unless it's endoscopic. Look at the laser, it's so magical. And it's non-electrical so it can work right next to the nerve, but more importantly, it just has a different activity profile than all the other instruments and they all complement each other, so. Sort of like I use my Phillips head screwdriver when I need it to use the Phillips head screwdriver. An Allen wrench when I need to use the Allen wrench. And a flathead when I use the, use, need to use the flathead. It's just common sense. Because no good carpenter and handyman only has one tool in their toolbox. They have an array of tools that they rely on depending on the situation. Spine surgery is absolutely the same. Things are going really well. Woo, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that felt good. Yep, that's a piece of busted up nucleus trapped inside the posterior annulus. And we already know from extensive experience that that is not a good thing. If you take a poor rabbit, you take out the disc from its twin brother, the nucleus, and you just lay it on the nerve in the spinal canal of its twin brother. And then you do some histolo histologic analysis. The inflammation caused by the, of the nucleus material is tremendous. So basically the body recognizes any free nucleus material as something's wrong and it makes sense since it's supposed to be contained inside the disc and it starts a healing response which always starts with inflammation. And if that inflammatory process does not know to turn off, it's like tennis elbow. It just stays painful for a very long time. Alrighty, I think I'm done with this level. I'm going to now look around and make sure because I check my car alarm three times before I come in. Yes, I do. Okay, here's some of the pieces. These are just the pieces that I was up actually able to retrieve and didn't just fall into the irrigation. Four, five, there's a lot. Three, four, not as much, but that was more far lateral. So I'm hoting you're going to feel a lot better now that I got that Goomba out of here. Alrighty, all done. Each level had its own little vampire bite. This is like one of those vampires with a really crooked mouth. But I'm still just amazed that I can just put a band-aid on here. Elevate the world's ex most expensive band-aid, I'm sure. Oh yes! Best wishes for a speedy recovery. 